story to the children again, okay? Can you sit in quietly so we can listen? So they can listen. Our story today is called The Book Tree and it's written by Paul Sajak. What do you think this book is gonna be about? Look at that tree. I see Arlo sitting in the tree. I see a kitty cat sitting in a tree. What else do you see in that tree? Hmm, let's find out what the book is about. The book tree. Nestled in the branches of a tree, Arlo opened his book and breathed in. <sighs> Beginnings were always the best part. They smelled as if anything were possible. Look at all that's happening on this tree, around this tree. Look at, what are all these people doing? So many things happening. Look at that. Bonk! The book fell out of the tree. I'm sorry, Mayor. I got lost in my book and it slipped, said Arlo. Preposterous! Books are dangerous. I don't trust them. They act like seeds which grow into ideas, and ideas turn into questions. I will tell you what you need to know. Mm, this is the mayor. Do you know what a mayor is? That's the person that's in charge of the city. Hmm, what do you think of him? First, the mayor gathered every book in the library and then every book in the whole town. And then he tore them up until all that was left was a single page that floated away in a passing breeze. Hmm. Arlo chased the page as it blew across town. It reminded him of a dandelion seed drifting on a wish. When it landed, the muddy earth swallowed it letter by letter until it was gone. Oh, look at Arlo flying on a dandelion. Have you ever taken a dandelion and made a wish and then blown the seeds? into the wind, so fun to do. Arlo thought that perhaps the mayor was right. After all, he had been elected mayor. He must know something. But without books, Arlo noticed changes wherever he looked. At school, teachers had nothing to read. So story time became nap time. Without cookbooks, restaurants served only dry cereal. Nobody went to the theater since actors had nothing to act out. And in the place Arlo loved most, the library. All the shelves were empty. Hmm. Hmm. How do you think Arlo's feeling right now? Hmm. Arlo sat where the last page was buried. He missed the crack and creak of a book's spine the first time you opened it. This is called the book's spine. He longed for the smell and the crisp texture of the book's pages. But most of all, he missed getting lost in the epic adventure. Sadly, Arlo scratched two words into the dirt he wrote the end. Endings were the worst part of any book, thought Arlo. But as he started, stared at the words, they grew into an idea. Arlo sat with pencil and paper and let his ideas flow. Whoa. Look at all the thoughts Arlo's having. 
What do you think of all those thoughts? He read his stories out loud to anyone who passed by, but no one stopped to listen. Then Arlo heard something, a sound he thought he'd never hear again, that familiar crack, creak. Hmm, do you remember what made a crack, creak sound? Look at all these pictures and all these different things people are doing. Be sure to stop the tape sometimes and just look at the pictures. When Arlo looked for the source of the sound, he saw a sprout springing from where the page had been buried. It began to open its leaves. It reached for Arlo's words, begging for more. Look at the sprout beginning to grow. What is growing out of the leaves? What's blossoming? Oh my goodness. This is a fun story. With every story Arlo wrote and read aloud, the sprout grew. Arlo wrote a story about a giant and the tree grew tall, stretching for the clouds. He wrote about a fire breathing beast and its branches became as strong as a dragon's claws. He wrote about a magical swan made of paper and blossoms of tissue paper blossomed into books. Oh my goodness. Look at all these wonderful stories coming to life on the tree. Look at, there's a dragon. Here's the swan. Look at how big the blossom's getting. When the books were ripe, <laughs> Arlo climbed into the branches of the book tree and breathed deeply enjoying the fruits of his harvest. While Arlo read, a friend stopped under the tree. I'm bored, there's nothing to do. You could try reading, Arlo said. Is, is that a, a book? Yep, here, I love this story, Arlo said, giving her a hand up into the tree. The two shared a shady spot him helping his friend. Soon, flocks of readers roosted on the limbs. Books spread through the town like pollen in the wind. People grew hungry for reading again. Some wrote their own stories and became book gardeners themselves. Oh my goodness, look at this. A tree that's growing books. Fiery maples bloomed with picture books. Willows wept with poetry and fruit trees filled with cookbooks. Flourishing as the trees grew, the town blossomed. Wow, how do you think people are feeling right now? The mayor, lost in his marial work, was oblivious to all the changes. That is, until a ripe book fell on his head. Mm -hmm. Bonk! The mayor kicked and stomped. Who planted these trees? You did, sir, Arlo said. When you tore up the books, it planted an idea. Impossible. This is the second time my head is hurting because of a book. The trees have to be cut down. But we've become a town of books and stories. You can't cut them down. Look at Arlo and his kitty cat holding a book. All the townspeople are beginning to think, hmm, what are they beginning to think? What do you think about all these stories growing on trees? The mayor walked the streets of the town. He gorged himself at one of the five-star restaurants, caught a show in the park, and lost himself in a story about a boy fishing for a whale in a puddle. Oh my goodness, that sounds like a wonderful story.
books did all this? The mayor asked, astonished. What do you think astonished means? No, Arlo said as he handed the mayor a freshly picked story. The book was just the seed. What do you think? Do you think the mayor likes books again? Would you like to live in that town where stories grow on trees? You could climb a tree and pick a book? Well, there we go. Our story is told. Have a good day. Good job, Dorme. Say goodbye. Say goodbye to our children friends. Bye-bye.